This is going to be your guide for the best raid dens in the Isle of Armor DLC. We have a lot of Pokemon to talk about, so let's just get right into it. And I want to start off with one of the most important ones first, because it answers a really big question. If Lycanroc is in the game, then where do we get Dusk Lycanroc since it was an exclusive event almost three years ago? How are we going to keep this own tempo rock rough alive? Now, what you can do is use Pokemon Home with the original one or Dusk Lycanroc. You can breed it, Chance Own Tempo carries down, or you just go to this den right here. So you go to the Tower of Darkness, you make a left down this path, and then you can farm this den to get own tempo rock rough, or even the chance of having a Dusk Lycanroc spawn. Now you do have to worry about event dens, and that does kind of slow things down a bit. Actually, you know what? This is a really good thing to get out of the way early on in the video, because I know a lot of players might get really confused if they go to a den and they find a Pokemon that has no right being there. Well, that's because it's a part of an event, and events are pretty much always happening in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Now, to clear the event, you do have to use another wishing piece, so maybe you throw that wishing piece in a den that's also discussed later on in this video, but for this one, you can just kind of go to the nearest den, throw in the wishing piece, that's going to get rid of the other den, and it's going to have a chance to roll. So this is just going Going to be a standard den which means now we go back and then we hope for rock rough okay and it's a purple den which is great because we can get even more explanation out of the way early on in the video so each pokemon den has two different groups of pokemon that it can pull from that we have the common red den and the rare purple den and the spawns are going to be different some pokemon are exclusive to some of the dens but fortunately when it comes to rock rough that if you want the own tempo rock rough or even dusk lichen rock you can get it from both the red and purple den however the purple den makes own tempo more common so we can use that to kind of set up this den a little better and one thing you can do depending on the pokemon that you're looking for is optimize it that we have a three star rock rough which means we can just bring kind of a, a mid-level pokemon you don't have to have a level 100 to win raids but when we look at this i have gyarados this gyarados has intimidate intimidate triggers own tempo which means we can find out immediately if this is an own tempo rock rough or some other kind of rock rough and rock rough's attack fell so this is not the den that we're looking for and since we threw in the wishing piece it also means that we automatically save the game so we can just go for a soft reset and then we can time skip ahead to cycle through more rock rough or end up with the dusk lichen rock now I'm kind of torn as to the best way of going for Rockruff specifically. Like, this video is going to be about all the other rare dens and all the other good Pokemon to find. There's still a lot of, like, optimization and min-max going on for just getting the Rockruff. So what you want to do is if you want to times, or yeah, you can time skip ahead to change the Pokemon, invite others, hit the B button, home, advance the day by one, and then you cancel out and it's going to change the Pokemon that spawns. But it's also going to keep the den rarity, so that's something to keep in mind for later on in the video. So we're using the Rockruff den as the long example for the best ways of getting the Pokemon that you're targeting. And... It could also just be that simple where you get into the Dusk Lycanroc because, again, Purple Den ended up being more common. With this, we don't have to bring Intimidate. We just bring the Savali, and it's ours. Epic. Moonball, Dusk Lycanroc. You mad? Now, the next raid I want to talk about is on a peculiar island in the Workout Sea where primarily Ditto spawn, which means, you guessed it, it's a Ditto Den. However... This Ditto Den is way better than the one that we have back on mainland Galar, because if you might have noticed, that's just a common beam. You don't have to reset and cheese the game until you get a purple beam to have a chance at a Ditto to then reset it. Nah, no, you throw in a wishing piece and it's almost always going to be a Ditto, because Chansey and Blissey have a 5% chance to spawn in pretty much any Den on the Isle of Armor, but this is still going to be a really good way of getting Dittos, and then what you want to do is time skip. So you time skip until you get a 5 star ditto, and that is going to give you the best chance of getting a 6 IV ditto in the Isle of Armor, at least without any events going on. A couple of months ago, there was an event that made it to where all of the ditto that showed up had guaranteed 5 IVs, so it was really easy to get 6 IV ditto, and you can just kind of like run that until it happens. Uh, just kind of want to show you guys, you know, history is a good thing to keep an eye on. That if there's another event that goes on that's for breeding, you can use it to farm all of the breeding ditto that you want. So I the no good attack i also have just six iv ditto 
no good speed, and I also have a foreign ditto hanging around somewhere as well. So, so it's just going to be like the best way of doing it. Also, your standard ditto rules apply. If you only get a couple of five IVs, you can still use them for breeding if you don't have a six IV. But it's going to be a pretty good way to get yourself a breeding setup in Pokemon Sword and Shield, and it's just better if you have the Isle of Armor. Now, to find the island, it's kind of weird because it isn't even on the map. It's like a Mirage Island or something. So you're going to have to go to the east side of the map, just surf northeast until you find it. It's got trees, can't miss it. There we go. So now let's head on over to the forest. Because when we make it to the forest, we can find ourselves Gigantamax Venusaur. So not only do you get to pick a Kanto starter Pokemon that can Gigantamax during the story, and not only can you give one of the Kanto starters a Max Soup to give it the Gigantamax Factor, you can actually find Venusaur and Blastoise in raids in the game that can Gigantamax. No, it's not in the water, it's not in Aracuda, but it's that den over there. Now, this is where we get into another mechanic for max raid farming, and that is going to be resetting for a purple beam. So what you do is you throw in a wishing piece, you save your adventure, and then right before the game saves, you can actually soft reset and determine if it's a red beam or a purple beam. I saw the red beam, which means it's not going to be a Gigantamax Pokemon, since Gigantamax Pokemon are the 1% rare spawns in purple beams, so you can just do that. But once you get the purple beam, you can then soft reset the purple beam until the Pokemon you're looking for appears. There's probably going to be some other 1% Pokemon in this video, but that's going to be where you find the Gigantamax Venusaur. And as you can see, I successfully did the reset. So let's do that again. Purple beam, or not purple beam, red beam, so on and so forth. I don't really care to have the Gigantamax Venusaur, but that's where you do it. That's how you do it. Now the Blastoise Den is hidden on an island in the Stepping Stone Sea, so you have to go behind one of the island areas to find it, however it's really close to a fly point. So you go to the Tower of Waters and then you just kind of line yourself up between those two rocks, and then you just come this way, the island has like trees and looks kind of normal on the front, but then when you go behind it, that's where you find the Blastoise Den, same rules apply for the Venusaur. The next couple of raids have something very special in common, and that's the hidden abilities for the Generation 8 Pokemon that didn't have them with the launch of Pokemon Sword and Shield. So this den, right here, right by the station, is where you can get hidden ability double. Now the thing is, you have to have a purple beam for the next couple of Pokemon we're going to talk about, so reset this, get the purple beam, reset it until you get double, and boom! Bulletproof hidden ability, which is actually pretty good. Aura Sphere, super effective, that's now an immunity. A lot of other powerful moves, or just like somewhat common moves, immunity. Like you're just immune to these moves for free. Pyroball, that's a new one that benefits with the bulletproof ability. Now I'm not saying like, oh, now double is going to be crazy meta because it comes in and then like hard counters Cinderace or something. But if Cinderace is choice and using Pyroball, you can actually stop it with the double. And I mean, Fluffy... It's an alright ability. Steadfast is an okay ability, but Bulletproof is really good, and I wish a lot more Pokemon had it. Either way, Double is more viable, so that's only a good thing. And then to make life easy for us, you head a right on over here, and this is where you can get Competitive Bolt Hound in a Purple Beam. Now, Competitive Bolt Hound going to be really solid. Like, surprisingly solid, because it has the same attack stat as Special Attack. So a 121 speed Pokemon that you just kind of tech into certain team compositions or anti-meta compositions and doubles, you're now doubling your special attack against Intimidate on 121 speed. You get to tear things up with Bolt Hound. I think a Strong Jaw was pretty good, but this just unlocks an insane amount of damage for the Bolt Hound. So yeah, once again, more viability. That could work out really well. After that, we want to head on over to the Tower of Darkness, and this is where we're going to find Thievil. If we head on over to the back of the Tower of Darkness, we can find a den that has Dark-type Pokemon, and this is going to have Stakeout Thievil. Stakeout sounded broken, but not a lot of Pokemon get it. Thievil really isn't super competitively viable, and Unburden is really good, so I don't think this is really going to change too many things for the Thievil, but now let's go and find that Gluttony Greedent. This den on the island in Loop Lagoon has the Gluttony Greedent, Greedent has a lot of crazy berry combos, so people are probably going to experiment with that and find some pretty cool stuff. And then, like I mentioned before, there is a low chance that you can find a Blissey or a Chansey inside the dens. 
Chansey will only spawn in red dens, and then Blissey will only spawn in purple dens. Never reset over these. If you see one of these, always do them, and you can just bring certain Pokemon to be very strong against them. Now, Zamazenta is going to have a massive advantage because you're just going to be using a super effective physical behemoth bash against Chansey or Blissey, which effectively have no defenses. But on that, just bring a physical Pokemon, mash your way through it, doesn't matter which rarity it is, you just want this for the rewards, and the rewards are amazing. Look at all of that candy and Armorite Ore, and I'm guessing if you do a 5-star Chansey, you just get like an insane amount of extra large candies as well. But what makes this really good is that you have a guaranteed chance of getting a rare candy on top of that. So tons of Pokemon levels, get them low 100, hyper train them, super easy like that. You also get an enhanced amount of Armorite Ore, and if it's a purple beam for the Blissey, you get 5 Armorite Ore and then up to 3 rare candies. You also have a chance of getting up to 3 rare candies on the regular Chansey. It only took me two turns, and you have a chance of just getting like a crazy roll, insanely lucky, higher chance of bottle cap, high chance of getting the lucky egg item, and it's just pretty awesome. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Those are some of the best dens in the Isle of Armor. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, share with your friends. Have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.